Violin World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 793 The Road Home. Valet got looks as she walked her way through the cliffs and balconies of Granbell, but nobody bothered her, either because she was too famous for anyone to think it was smart, or because she was just that lucky. Starlight walked nearby, minding her own business, and Maple and Shinespark had stayed behind in the core, Maple hoping to pocket some of the harmonic flame for herself, and Shinespark too curious about the technology to leave it sitting alone. I didn't realize how grainy things looked for a camera, Niala remarked, draped across Valet's back with no strength of her own. Heh, <laughs> yeah, couldn't tell you what that's like. Valet strolled slowly, knowing they had to get back soon so Niala could eat, but doing her best not to make it a bumpy ride. Niala wasn't complaining. It's a shame there's no way to get your memories of our times in Ironbridge when I used that pendant to get you out. You could have remembered us dunking on Herman. Right, Niala's voice was weak. I want to lie down and sleep for a month. I hope you won't mind if I skip watching the tournament tomorrow. Valet's tail swished. Not really feeling up to it. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, she continued walking. So you remember Ice Reach now like it was yesterday, huh? Clearer than I remember being a machine, Niella answered. I know it wasn't yesterday, but it doesn't feel like seven years. Yeah, maybe your head just needs time to settle down. Whatever just brought you back didn't look that great. Uh, Valet rounded the switchback, searching for an elevator. Bananas! I still can't believe this. I don't even know how to celebrate. Back in Anridge, I'd swipe some fruit and throw it at someone who wasn't looking. You feel like you need to let loose too? <laughs> Niala chuckled weakly. I feel like I need to sleep. Letting loose is good though. I suppose I'm happy for me too. You suppose? Valet tilted her head. I'm only now realizing how much I miss, Niala groaned. Sorry, I have a lot of memories to reconcile. You'll get there, Valet encouraged. Oh, hey, there's an elevator. Let's... A dainty voice cleared its throat from the side. Darling, is this a bad time? Valet's ears fell. Felicity stepped into view, looking as well taken care of as ever. Valet felt Niala shift atop her and stopped, rubbing one hoof against another uncertainly. Uh, maybe? We kind of need to get back to the ship. Ah, uh, Felicity looked down. I wouldn't want to delay you, of course, but whenever it would be possible, my sisters and I have spent some time talking, and I have some things I need to get off my chest toward you. Niala smiled apologetically. If you need to catch up, I'm sure I can hang on a while longer. Have we met? Felicity blinked, glancing to the mayor in Valet's back. Your voice sounds familiar, but I think I'd have remembered any other Cerosians. Yeah, sorta, Valet answered for her, wishing this could have waited for any other day. Listen, I'm not slowing down, she pointed at the elevator. We're going up. You want my ear? You got it until we get to the surface, and then I'm booking it. Felicity nodded gratefully. Only a few moments of your time, darling. Promise. As Starlight scurried on past, she glanced at Niala again. So we have met? Usually I'm good with faces. It might be a coincidence, Niala apologized, subtly kicking her ride. I'm just a friend in need. What did you want to ask Valet about? Ah, yes, must be. Felicity backed down, following Valet and Starlight into the elevator, and watching both other bat ponies with a keen eye. I can tell when it's a bad time, you know, darlings. Are you sure you wouldn't rather I come back later? <sighs> Valet sighed. How important is it? To you or to me? Wrong answer. Valet winced as the elevator closed, locking them into a cylinder of lit glass and began to rise. So, what's up? Felicity furtively coughed. Well, I owe you a proper apology after having my head a little bit in the sand for a while, so to speak, for Stormhoof. Now, whether you'd like the full version now, or at a time when I'm not just going to have to apologize again for imposing is up to you, but I'm um, sorry for what we did and wish I had done things differently, and not just because we failed. 
The lady raised an eyebrow, Starlight and Niala holding her silence. Oh, really? Yes, really, Felicity insisted. Now that a little more time has passed and I've had a longer while to see what life afterward is like, and especially after a few frank talks with my sisters, it's a lot more apparent that finishing your life's work doesn't equate to giving yourself a future. It wasn't worth it, and you... You should have been our first choice. So there. Really, Valet repeated, giving her an inquisitive look. Like, actually really? You suddenly are going to turn around and actually get the point of apologizing? Who managed to get it for your skull? Felicity winced. I did, and lost any help, and yes, that is my hope. Well, that's neat. Valet kept Felicity under her gaze, aware the other mare was making herself uncomfortable. Look, whatever you're after, I'm honestly in a pretty good mood right now, but I've also got my own things to take care of. If you want to talk, you think we could do that later? Say, after the tournament tomorrow? In the meantime, just do trustworthy stuff and things? Do trustworthy things, of course. Felicity bit her tongue and bowed and was quiet for the rest of the ride. Eventually, the elevator opened and Felicity hurried away, ending the tension in the silence. Phew, Valet said, wiping her brow. Didn't expect to run into her right there. She knew who I was, Niela remarked. Are you sure you're fine having her wandering around knowing? There have been a lot of ponies who were interested in getting ponies out of Moonglass. Yeah, Valet shrugged. Eh, Chauncey and Navarro are dead. And honestly, I trust her. Felicity's good at manipulating and horrible at being, you know, a decent pony. So she should know how to keep a secret. I figure her heart's been in the right place more or less ever after Stormhoof. Sort of. She's just the worst at showing it. I don't know, we'll see. We're leaving the Empire soon anyway, so if anything does go wrong, easy enough to bail. Yeah, if you're sure, Niala answered uneasily. I'm not the one who's been in the front lines because of her. Nah, I'm not sure, Vili frowned. And she got me for that once before. But what am I even going to do? Drag her back to the ship and lock her up there until she can somehow prove she's trustworthy? No. You did do that to Navarra, Niala pointed out. Granted, I'd have done a lot worse to him. Hmm, Valet nodded. Yeah, and Navarra running away would have cost us big time. And there's a chance Felicity actually will be trustworthy this time. Niala sighed. I gave Navarra a chance, you know. I kept him company down in that pantry for weeks, and was the only one who would. And now that I remember what he was like, it makes me mad. Mm, to be fair, Valet shrugged again. He didn't remember you either. Same ponies, maybe, but for both of you, that stuff happened in a different life. <laughs> Niala chuckled. Well, thanks for not treating him any worse, since you did remember. My body feels bad enough as it is. How long has it been sitting around without moving again? Ah, Valet scratched her head with a wingtip. I don't know, months? Two? Two and a half? Bananas! We're going to have to get you doing some physical therapy or an exercise regimen. Your muscles are probably like string beans. Heh, <laughs> yeah. Niala relaxed again, leaning into Valet as they finally crested the edge of the city pit and made it onto the sunny surface. After I get something to eat. End of chapter 793